Hey, what's up? Um, I think I'm gonna make a quick video. Uh, it's late. I'm fucking tired, as you can probably tell from the bags under my eyes. Didn't get a whole lot of sleep this week. You know, kind of running hard and stuff like that. So, just took a shower, ate. As soon as I'm done with this video and this cigarette, knocked the fuck out. I'm gonna hit the hit the bed hard. Um, let's see. Well, my third trainee is gone, but he didn't wash out. He actually graduated. Uh, he was only on a truck for about two weeks um, And the reason he was only on the truck for about two weeks is because A, because he was SQT Which for anyone who doesn't know Means that he came into the company with a CDL But didn't ha had gone to a CDL school per se So if you haven't gone to a CDL school But you already have your CDL They put you through what's called the SQT program and basically it's something to the gist of they train you how to drive the truck and in return you sign like a nine month or a year contract or something like that and you only get paid 34 cents a mile and then that they hold out like two or three cents a mile to uh, pay for them training you or some shit I think you might actually get it back after your contract is up I'm not sure just an incentive to keep you around, I guess. But nonetheless, you know, I, you know, because he was SQT, you know, I, after about two weeks, we were down in Georgia, and uh, they sent a message that said, you know, is is the trainee ready to graduate? And I said, yeah, pretty much. You know, he pretty much had the job down. Not, you know, at, we were at the point where he was kind of, we were just hauling freight, really. Didn't really need to teach him much more. So I said, yeah, so they had a recovery for him in the new Atlanta terminal. So I got to see the Atlanta terminal. Little small ass terminal. You know, I don't think there's hardly any people working there yet. But, uh, look, I mean, yeah, if you come into this company and you start out as a trainee, I mean, you're supposed to be four weeks on the road, but a two, three, four weeks, any, any given time, they could say, hey, we got a truck for this guy to recover. Is he ready? And, you know, if you're not, I'll just say, nah, it's not ready yet. You know, because you take a recovery. Even if you're going to go back to Nashville to do your road test, uh, you're still going to have to grab a trailer and haul some freight to get there and stuff. So, you know, there was an intertrational at the Atlanta terminal for him to take. And so, and I was going to make this video tonight after I loaded up this big fucking ingot and say if there's anybody at the yard that watches my videos it's gonna be ready to go tomorrow mo Friday morning that I'll be there in the morning but before I can make the video they had already actually assigned another trainee to me um, within a couple of hours so he's already up at the hotel waiting so, sorry, Danny, for getting anybody's hopes up. Um, there's only two things I wanted to talk about in this video, really. One was just to tell you a quick little story about how... Um, uh, about, about a week, week and a half ago, about two weeks ago, we were, me and my last trainee, the guy who just got off, we were at a truck stop in Kentucky. Somewhere between Lexington and Louisville, right? And we stop to take a shower, and I get out, and I'm walking through the parking lot, and there's a chicken in the parking lot, like, like a brown chicken, like a hen, walking, or just walking around the parking lot, not really freaked out or scared, just kind of, you know, what's up, you know? And I walk right past the little bastard, and he just kind of looked at me and walked off, you know? <laughs> It's like, man, that's fucking weird. I figure that must be a Kentucky thing. You know, Kentucky Fried Chicken? I don't know. But... I came back out and the chicken was gone. So we jumped back in the truck and we haul ass the, the, 
like three three hours a good 150 miles or so up to Louisville park for the night so we could deliver one of those postal vans and in the morning when we pull around to get unloaded the goddamn chicken is there and I was like he must have hitched a ride on the fucking truck and the fucking chicken climbed up into the truck and rode the fucking three hours down to Louisville and then jumped out and started walking around and the post office guys they, they got a kick out of it I think what they captured the chicken and put it in a box and I said well, what are you guys gonna do with it you, you gonna uh, you gonna fry it up or what and he said no nah, one of the guys that works here has a, a farm or a ranch or some shit and he's been wanting chicken so we're saving the chicken for him <laughs> I said all right <clears throat> <clears throat> well, that was about two weeks ago, and then today when I went to load up this ingot, I took all my chains down and I took my ladder and I was grabbing some bungees and shit out of the well, the well that you put all your rubbers in, your rubber pieces and shit. And then I looked down in the well, and there's a goddamn chick, a broken chicken egg in the fucking well. So the chicken climbed up into the truck behind the chains and sat down, and while we was, he was hitching a ride down to Louisville, he lay, she laid a fucking egg and then hopped out and fucking walked off. It was... <laughs> it was fucking weird. I, I, I had to take a picture of it, you know? It was <laughs> really fucking hot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> other than that, um, look, I showed up to pick up this fucking ingot down in Greensboro, Georgia, where we always pick them up, you know? And... You know, I showed up and, you know, you park outside and you wait in line because they only allow four or five trucks back there at a time to get loaded. And it's me in the back of the line somewhere and then there's one, two, three other western trucks there. So I'm sitting and I'm waiting and, uh, you know, bullshitting with the other western drivers and stuff. And then I st we, st we start to notice that... TMC, which hauls a fuckload of those ingots, I think they haul more than we do, and we haul a lot of them, you know, their ingots are giant blocks of fucking aluminum, by the way, if you didn't know, but they're like passing us up, and we're starting to be like, what the fuck, you know, we were here longer than these guys or whatever, and, you know, somebody goes and talks to the guard, and apparently what happened was... There was two Western trucks already back there, and they had been back there for almost two hours, securing their f fucking load. And that they wouldn't, they were, the guards would not let any more Western trucks back there until they came out. Because we were just taking, we take too long to fucking secure the loads. And I was like, you gotta be shitting me. And I'm talking to the other guy like, well, can we go back there and help them? Do you think they would let us? So we went down there, me and this other guy, this other western driver went down there. We said, hey, would you mind if we went back there to help them guys finish up? And they said, yeah, just put on all your, your safety gear. So we did, and then, you know, me and him and, like, two other western drivers, I guess there was four trucks, one, two, three. I guess there was, like, four western trucks, whatever. Uh, we walked back there, and, you know, there's... I, I think it's a couple. It was a couple of guys that had never hauled ingots before, and like, we walked back there. The dudes had been back there for almost two hours. One guy had like maybe four chains on, and that's it. Which that's like one chain every half hour. Like son of a bitch. So we walked back there, and we're like, all right, you two on that truck, us two on this truck, whatever. He said, hey, man, how you doing? You know, hey, we're going to give you a hand real quick with this. Oh, okay, cool, appreciate it. Yeah, well, we can't come back here until you're fucking out of here. They're making us wait on you, so. <clears throat> you know, we threw the fucking chains up and shit. And I said, don't worry about the straps. You can strap when you get out. Scale out and then go out there and finish off your fucking log. You know, so we got them out of there. You know, I walked back to my truck and shit. I figured things were going to start flowing now. You know, because... You know, the people, the, some experienced drivers that just had just walked back there and helped, you know, we'd all helped each other, whatever. Um, they were going back there. So they go back there, and then a fucking hour goes by. You know, almost an hour and a half goes by, and I'm like, what the fuck? You know? 
So I put all my gear on again. I walk back there again to find out what the fuck's going on. It's three Western trucks. You know, TMC is going in, and owner operators are going in, picking up their ingots, and then they're coming out, scaling out, and then securing their shit outside. More TMC trucks and owner operators going in. And here I am, Western Express, just getting passed by everybody. You know what I mean? I was like, what the fuck is this shit? So I go back there, and one dude is almost done. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'm not going to help you. I'm going to help this guy because you're almost done. You know, they're making me wait. They're like, you know, where's your truck? And I said, they won't let me in until you guys leave. You, you guys are taking all day. What the fuck happened? You know? And so, and then I helped the next guy. And then there was a, a lady trainer training this other lady. And they were, she was taking fucking forever because she was having like a, a chain and binder class session, you know? And then the first dude finishes his truck and then goes to help the fucking lady trainer with chain that other chick. I'm like, God damn it, come on. Somebody's got to fucking leave so I can get in here, right? Oh, it was so fucking stressful. So I, I helped the, the, the second guy and he said, hey, uh, hop in. I'll give you a ride up, back up to the front. All right, so I hopped in his truck and we were bullshitted for a minute. Scaled out and I was like, all right, we'll take it easy. I'm going to go wait in my truck. You know, and then... I had, you know, finally they start coming out and everybody's scaling out and it takes forever and they leave. So I'm waiting like, okay, here we go, any minute now. And then they call another TMC truck and then another TMC truck and then another TMC truck. And I'm like, I was here before all these motherfuckers, man. And then they call me, which one of the owner ops who was there told me, he's like, yeah, she said that she actually fucked up and forgot that they, they called you last they, they forgot about you and they called the TMC trucks first so you know I, I was there I was waiting for like five hours before I even got loaded you know and <clears throat> then I was finally able to you know and it got to the point where now I, could, I can't even didn't even have enough time to make it up to Nashville to pick up the trainee you know would have had to drive till 3 4 in the fucking morning and I decided against it because I'm tired and I just, you know, I wanted to drive all the way there, grab the trainee, get up to Russellville, and grab the next load for the weekend. But I'm so tired, I'm starting to get sick and I really, I need a full night's fucking rest with no bullshit, no truck, you know, the truck not moving, just quiet, you know, by myself, no other people. I need a whole night's rest to kind of recover. I'm starting to get cold, you know, I've been missing so much sleep. So I, you know, drove until midnight. I still got about 180 miles till Nashville, but I'm like, fuck it. I'm dead tired. I'm hungry. I needed a shower. It's like, fuck this shit. You know, I need a full night's rest. And, you know, I've got some pretty decent miles under my belt for the week. So I'll just take whatever. Any fucking load he can give me, I don't give a shit. 500, 700 miles, whatever. You know, just give it to me. I'll take a reset and fucking sleep in for a day or two. I don't give a shit. I've got enough miles for the week. But my point of telling that fucking story is if you go to pick up an ingot or if you go to any fucking place that has a tarping station or a securement station or any kind of fucking station that you use that other people have to wait in line to use, you do the bare fucking minimum and then you get the fuck out of the way. You know what I'm saying? If you need to change your fucking ingot or your load you put the cross the x chains on the front you put the x chains on the back and then you go scale the fuck out you put the rest of your shit on when you get out so the next truck can come in if you're using a fucking tarping station where only one or two trucks can use it at a time and you got seven fucking trucks waiting on it put your tarp on pin the corners and then get the fuck out of the way for the next truck don't go through putting every fucking bungee on, every single chain, every single strap. Don't fucking do it. It's unnecessary. You know, that's that's why Western takes so fucking long to get in and out of there when they're picking up ingots. It's because we're the only motherfuckers in there that pull off to the little securement station and we throw on all ten chains, all eight straps, the tarp if it's during the winter and the whole fucking nine inside the plant so 
Everybody else is sitting outside waiting on you. When you could be, you know, they won't let more trucks in until trucks come out. So, you know, just don't keep people fucking waiting on you. If you need a hand, if you don't know what you're doing, if you've never hauled that fucking load before, then ask for help. Find another Western driver. Find another driver from your company that will help you. They will fucking help you. Somebody will. You know, I know I will. I'll, anybody that's ever in front of me that is, you know, prohibiting me from getting my load and getting the fuck out of there, I will help you. I will fucking help you tarp that bitch, strap it, chain it, whatever the fuck you need. I'll I'll spot you as you back, whatever you need. It gets you out and it gets me out sooner. It's fucking teamwork, man. We're all on the same team here. We all got a common goal. Loaded and on the road and delivered so we can make more money. You know what I mean? You know, I know there's some motherfuckers out there that they want us tarped and they want to strap it and they want to chain it their way. They don't want any help, especially owner operators. I know what I'm doing. I don't need any fucking help. Well, you need to hurry the fuck up then, asshole. You know, you don't need any help, but you sure are going pretty goddamn slow. Just saying. You know, if you're a Western driver and you go to pick up an ingot, throw your X chains on and then get the fuck out of Dodge. You don't need to put all 10 chains on that bitch. You're going a couple hundred yards. You're going to pull onto the scale, pull down off the scale, grab your paperwork, and then go back to the front, outside the gates, and finish securing your shit. By the time, it took me maybe 15 minutes, as soon as that ingot hit my trailer, to the time I was already out the gate, 10, maybe 15 minutes. And a couple minutes of that, I was bullshitting with another driver. It takes maybe 10 minutes, like, you should already have your, when you're waiting outside, all your chains should are and binders should be on the deck already, uh, lined up on the deck, so that when you pull in there, all your chains and binders are there. You throw them over the fucking ingot, you know, get your teardrops going, put your binders on, snap, 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 get the fuck out. You know, keep things moving. You know, people are fucking waiting on you. The clock's ticking. You know, it just I was I was I waited for five fucking hours. And then, you know, I, then it took me another hour to secure, finish securing everything and then get my paperwork and shit. Six fucking hours. Can't even make it to Nashville. If I, if I was going to make it to Nashville, fucking, it would be like three, four in a goddamn morning. So I said, fuck it, you know. Just be considerate of people waiting on you, especially in a shipper receiver that, uh, or a shipper that has one tarping station. I can't tell you how many places I've been where it's just like one tar tarping station holds up the whole fucking show, especially if it's raining. Then the motherfuckers want to do the whole damn load up underneath, you know, the tarping station so they don't get wet. It's like, dude, I'm sorry. You need to fucking pin the corners, throw a bungee here and there, get it up off the ground, and then get the fuck out and let somebody else use the tarping station, man. Sometimes we're required to use it. We can't leave the premises until the load is tarped, you know, and you get these fucking rookies that, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, everybody starts out as a rookie, but, you know, you don't know what you're doing, you won't ask for help, and then you just do the whole fucking load, no, don't do that, get what you, get the tarp on, pin it up off the ground, and then move, it just drives me fucking crazy. It's just, it's a colossal fucking waste of time. And you fuck everyone in the ass that's waiting behind you. You know, just don't fucking do it. You know, be considerate. You know, and help your fellow fucking driver. You got two trucks at Kansas City, USG, the paper facility. They got one loading station and they tarp them in there too. I go up in there. You know, and, and help that motherfucker out. Help the trailer get loaded. Help him toss the straps. When he tosses the straps, get him in the winches for him. When he put, gets the tarp, center it. Throw a few bungees on it. All right, bud, you're, you're good to go. Go ahead and pull out to the street. We'll get the next guy in here. Let's go. Time is of the essence. Time is fucking money in this game, man. And I ain't out here to fucking hang around. I'm here to make money what I wanted to talk about in this fucking video. I feel like it's a very important fucking thing. So, other than that, uh, I ain't got nothing else for you right now. I ain't got nothing else. 
So I'll run this trainee for the next three, four, five weeks or whatever out till May, save up some more money, then I can move. Then I got plenty of money saved up so I can go home and move and shit. So, all right. Well, that's all for now. I'll talk to you guys real soon.